Hi there, this is part of a series of videos about Stendhal Game, which you can start to play from stendhalgame.org by clicking the Play Now button. In one of our earlier videos we explained how to get started with creating an account, so in this video I'm just going to jump straight in and show you some of the insights, some things that developers think about while we're creating the game. Now, up on the top left here in the mini-map, you can see a little cross representing my character. And how this character has got here has been by following the pale green areas on the minimap, which in this case are representing a path that she should follow out of the city. My character, Neve, is looking to find an interesting place to visit after heading out west from Samos. I clicked on the minimap to move around Hang on, I'm just going to attack this creature before it kills me. And it took the best path here, which was actually not following the little windy diagonal route, but going in quite a straight line along and down. That's part of our pathfinding algorithm, and the lack of twists and turns actually improved the look and feel of the client as the player moved around. Now... Neve is actually struggling against these creatures, so she needs to eat. I'm just going to click on these creatures. One of the things that we've introduced in the past year or so is that when you hover over items that you can interact with, then you see the way that you should interact with them. So I see a times two against the food because it's a double click to eat it. The other a really nice thing that was introduced in the last year was day and night. And I don't know if you just noticed, but the screen got a lot darker just now. That's because the time in local server time went from just before 10pm to just after 10pm. And so everything's got a lot darker because night is falling. Great. I'm going to head into this interesting looking area with these little gnomes running around on piglets. From a design point of view, I'd like to point out something that's hidden to a normal player playing this game. Neve is only level 11, and the th creatures that she can kill in this area should all be capable of her... No, she should be capable to kill all the creatures in this area, because the skull here is only one, up to a maximum of five, indicating danger. However, the thing that I want to point out is about the portal that Neve just walked through. This area is somewhat of a sweet spot for new players. The little gnomes have got quite generous drops when they die. The things that you can loot for them are quite attractive for you to collect. So these portals actually prevent you from getting in if you're anything more than level 50. I think that that means that this new player who's just walked in, he's got to be below level 50. That's right, he's only level 18. If he was more than level 50, he couldn't have got in. So, this is a multiplayer game, so you can expect that both of us might want to fight the gnomes at once. And that's really not a problem. If we both attack the same creature at once, we share out the experience points that we earn. Or we can choose to fight individually. Here you can see that Neve and the gnome were ex engaged in quite a long battle because Neve's skills were quite balanced compared to the gnome. Okay, with all these creatures attacking me, there's something quite interesting I'd like to point out. The plain simple gnome with the red hat has got a different artificial intelligence profile to the other two gnomes who are more army based. As I attacked that gnome with the red hat he actually ran away from me whereas as I attack the other gnomes they don't run away from me. This is an example of different artificial intelligence between creatures. Excuse me while I just pause for breath and run away before Neve dies. One of the ways that we developers make the game more interesting is to choose different artificial intelligence behaviours for our creatures. What you saw just there was the distinction between a coward creature and a brave creature. 
A gnome will run away when you attack him. He's a coward. A cavalry gnome or an infantry gnome, they're supposed to be part of some kind of gnome army and they do not run away. They stay and fight you. There are many more examples of artificial intelligence profiles that we use within the game to help distinguish creatures, but that was just an example of two of them. So I hope I've interested you with some of the elements of design within the game. I started out by explaining how Neve found this interesting place to come in the first place, which was by following paths marked out on the map. Then I talked a little bit about pathfinding and how the most sensible route for it a computation to take might be more straight lines, especially if that affects how the client looks. We noticed day turn into night while the screen got darker and everything went more purple. And then we also noticed another player come and join in with us, although we didn't interact very much with him today. We talked about portals, which may be used to prevent certain players getting into a zone that you want to preserve for young, lower level players. We talked about artificial intelligence profiles for creatures and then at the end you saw the exciting aspect which is my character nearly dying because she took on a rather large challenge compared to her own abilities. So I hope you enjoyed this short design introduction to some of the things that the developers think about when they're trying to create an interesting and well-balanced game. Night-night.